Lord be with you. And also with you. We are so grateful that you are here with us this day here at Beaumont Presbyterian Church, not physically with us, but on Facebook Live. We are grateful that you uh, tuned in to join us this day as we continue through the social distancing precautions of the coronavirus outbreak. We will continue to be here on Sunday morning so that we can worship together. So hopefully you are comfortable. Still, some of you may be in your pajamas uh, with cup of coffee and the kids. Uh, we are grateful that you made time to be with us. Uh, since we've got such a small group here today, I thought that I would take some time just to introduce who all is here. I'm Stephen Fearing. I'm the pastor of Beaumont Presbyterian Church, and we have some other folks here. Uh, we've got Jillian, Jillian, and we have Rebecca. Rebecca is going to help me with one of the readings uh, today. We have Isaac in the back. We have our music minister, Wayne. We have John here, who's going to serve as the liturgist, and over there um, tickling the keys is Lydia. And then you can't see them because they're behind the camera, but Jeff Shaver, our uh, youth director, will be doing our moment for children today. And Jeff is also sitting at, the lap at my laptop and will be engaging with you all on Facebook Live today. So if you'd like to uh, say hello in the comments or ask questions or anything like that, ask Jeff. Especially if you have really, really deep theological questions like why there is evil in the world. Jeff will be happy uh, to help you with that on Facebook Live. And then in the back of the sanctuary, we have uh, Chuck. Chuck's run running the soundboard. We have a new system uh, today. Instead of a microphone that's picking up all the ambient noise in the sanctuary, uh, Chuck used his wizardry this week and now has a direct audio line directly into the camera. So hopefully... Your audio feed, uh, your audio is much better than it was last week and a little bit less echoey. So we are grateful for everyone here and everyone at home. If you haven't received uh, it already via email or in the mail, your session, the elected elders of this congregation met via Zoom meeting on Tuesday to discern uh, how to lead courageously and faithfully in these uncertain times. And at that meeting on Tuesday night, we made the unanimous uh, but nonetheless difficult decision to cancel all in-person worship uh, and activities for the next eight weeks, which will take us through approximately mid-March. We are doing this out of safety for everybody. Uh, the few of us that are here are keeping our six-foot uh, distance rule, and we invite people to stay home. Please know that uh, we, the session is continually reevaluating this decision on a week-to-week -week basis. So if something does happen and we feel that it is safe to gather again physically, we will uh, do so. But in the meantime, we want to go ahead and prepare everyone to hunker down. Notice we are canceling in-person worship and events. We are not canceling worship and events. For example, we are on Facebook Live today, and we have some other uh, gatherings that are happening this week over Zoom. Uh, so I wanted to let you all know about that. The session also decided on Tuesday to divide up uh, the phone numbers of everyone who is a part of our family and to uh, call everyone who is a part of our family once, uh, once a week until the, uh, the end of this outbreak. So if after about a week or so you haven't heard uh, from somebody, let me know and we will make sure to stay in touch. Uh, also, we purchased a Zoom account this past week. If you don't know what Zoom is, Zoom is a mobile meeting platform that allows people to gather digitally either over the internet via a webcam, or if you don't have access to the internet, you can um, call in simply with your phone, your cell phone or your landline, and participate in the meeting that way. We have purchased account for this congregation, which means that any group or groups of folks within this congregation can use that platform. In fact, we've already had a Bible study over Zoom meeting. We've had a session meeting, as I said, over Zoom meeting. I know next week our Wednesday women's group is meeting over Zoom as well as our, um, as well as our uh, BPC book club. So I say this just so that you know <clears throat> that that technology is available for, it, for anyone and everyone in this congregation. If you're curious as to how it works, give me a call. Shoot me an email, send me a text, and I will be happy to uh, let you know how that works. 
I also would like to invite you to a Zoom meeting that I will be hosting this Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. I will send out the, I will email and on Facebook put out the information of that meeting. I will gather, uh, open up a room uh, on Zoom Wednesday at 7, simply for us to hang out. Anybody wants to come drop in for any period of time, you can. Let us know how, you're, how you are doing. We'll pray together. We'll laugh together. We will read some scripture together. That will be this Wednesday at 7. Wanted to invite you to join us uh, for that. Finally, we continue to pray for the family of Russell Huffman. Uh, Russell uh, went to, on to join the Heavenly Choir at the uh, good old age of 93 the week before last. So we continue to pray for him and his family. Friends, I believe that's all of the announcements for this day. I would now invite um, uh, John to lead us in our prayer of the day and then Lydia to lead us in our prelude. <clears throat> Holy God, why is it that we look but do not see? Bring us again and again into your light until your ways become visible to us and bear fruit in us. Touch us so that we are utterly changed, a before and after, a now and then, that we may also say, one thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. Lord, we believe, help our unbelief. In Christ's light we pray, amen.
Please rise in body and spirit and join me in the call to worship. God is in the water that restores our soul. And God is in the night when we lose our way. God is in today and tomorrow, raising up leaders, prophets, and dreamers. And God is in the wilderness with us every step of the way. So with confidence we declare, if God is in those places, then God is surely here. Let us worship the God of creation. Let us worship the God of wilderness spaces. Our first hymn this morning is number 816, If Thou But Trust in God to Guide Thee. As children of God's light, we are called to do what is pleasing to the Lord, to participate in what is good and right and true, and expose what is unfruitful and evil. Knowing that we turn from the light, we bring our confession to God, so that what is hidden in us becomes visible, and the shadows of our hearts may be illumined by grace. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Jesus of Nazareth, there are stories of you healing the blind all over scripture. You were constantly opening people's eyes. So today we confess that we often choose to keep our eyes closed. We turn away from injustice in our world, worried you might ask us to work for change. We close our eyes to our privilege because the truth is uncomfortable. We avoid eye contact with those who are suffering to avoid identifying with their pain. Forgive us for failing to be your church in the world. Guide us from the depths of our wilderness into your light. Amen. Amen. 
the psalmist assures us that God's goodness and mercy will follow us, even pursue us all the days of our life. As God's forgiven people receive this goodness and mercy and live in a new life in the grace of Jesus Christ. We will live as children of the light for Christ shines on us. Amen, amen, amen. Friends, since God has forgiven us in Jesus Christ, so too we ought to forgive one another. Peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. I invite you to share the peace with whomever you are sitting with currently. Peace. 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 Well, good morning. This is, uh, this is the time for the kids, so if you're at home watching with your family, uh, listen up, all you kiddos, because this is, this is for you. So in today's uh, gospel reading, Jesus heals uh, the eyes of a blind man, and, and I think that's an amazing story. Um, but there were actually a lot of people in, in the story that really didn't believe Jesus could do such a thing. You know, they said things like, like, this, this man really isn't healed. This Jesus guy can't really be the son of God. And so they couldn't see who, who Jesus was because they kind of closed the eyes of their hearts. They became kind of numb to what Jesus is doing. And I think sometimes, I think we can kind of do the same thing. I think sometimes it's hard for us to see God. Um, I think uh, it's hard for us to imagine that God is really there. I think it's, it's hard for us to, to see God when, when God doesn't always feel like God is there. And I think when, when life gets scary for us or when things get difficult, we, sometimes we feel like we're alone. Sometimes we feel like, like God really isn't there. And what the Bible says is that we're not alone. So here's what I want us to do. I want us to do something. I want us to close your eyes for five seconds, and I want you to imagine God is there with you. So maybe, maybe God is standing with you. Maybe God is sitting with you. Maybe you need a hug, whatever it is. But for five seconds, we're going to close our eyes, and I want us to just imagine God is there with us. Okay, ready? No peeking. Did you do it? Did it help? Let's pray together. Dear God, Dear God thank you for always watching over us. Thank you for always watching over us. Even when we can't see you. Even when we can't see you. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, illumine our hearts and minds as the scriptures are read and proclaimed, so that by the power of your Holy Spirit we may see what is good and right and true. And seeing, help us to do what is pleasing to you, so that your glory becomes visible in our words and deeds. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning is from Psalm 23. If you have access to a bulletin, you can see that there is a sung refrain that we would like for you to join us on at the indicated locations. The first time, Lydia will play it once, and then we'll all sing it together. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. The Lord is
is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God.
would now invite uh, Rebecca to come forth. Uh, it's, a, it's a long passage today. It's in fact our passage is the entirety. Move the mic down just a little bit there. Uh, the the entirety of the ninth chapter of John's Gospel. So Rebecca is going to help me uh, read this today. So let us listen to John chapter nine verses one through forty one. What God is saying to God's church today. As he walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is he. Others were saying, no, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud spread it on my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees says, said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others say, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that he, now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age. Ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind. And they said to him, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? The man answered them, I have told you already, and you wouldn't listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become one of his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciples, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man... We do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. 
We know that God does not listen to sinners, but He does listen to one who worships Him and obeys His will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered Him, You were born entirely in sins, and you are trying to teach us? And then they drove Him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say, We see, Your sin remains. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks Thanks be to to God. God. Thank you, Rebecca. Friends, let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As far as I can tell, today's story from John's Gospel is by far the most detailed account of a miracle in all four Gospels. This story takes up an entire chapter and has many characters. Jesus, the man who was born blind, his parents, the disciples, the religious leaders, the strangers in the crowd. This story is unique in the fact that the vast majority of the content of this chapter is not about the miracle itself, but rather about its aftermath. The miracle is simple enough. Jesus and his disciples come across a man who has been blind from birth, and after quickly correcting their mistaken notion that the man was disabled because of his sin or his parents' sin, Jesus spits on the ground, makes mud, smears it on the man's eyes, and tells him to wash it off in a nearby pool called Siloam. He does so, and then he can see. If the story ended here, it would get lost maybe in some of the other stories of miraculous healings. However, what follows once the man regains his sight sets this miracle apart from all others. What follows are several lengthy interrogations in which everyone and their brother try to solve the mystery of how this happened and whether or not this miracle was performed in a worthy, righteous manner. First, the man encounters his neighbors, the ones who for years, decades even, watched him beg sitting by the side of the road. They stand in disbelief. Could could this be the man that we've always known as the beggar? Some others say, of course not. It's just just his doppelganger, somebody who looks like him. Then the man is dragged in front of the religious leaders and they interrogate him. How could this man have done a miracle, they ask? After all, he did what you say he did on the Sabbath. Therefore, that makes him a sinner, and we know that sinners cannot perform miracles. So someone is lying here. Is it you, or is it him? Not getting the answer from him that they wanted, they go and they track down the man's parents. They ask him, how is it that that their son now sees? And they deflect to their son, citing that he is of age to answer questions for himself. And then finally... The religious leaders call the man back before them and lambast him once again with vitriol. They continue to call Jesus a sinner. 
And all along this roller coaster ride, as the formerly blind man is in a tug of war between people who just won't bring themselves to accept what Jesus has done, this man is steadfast in his testimony. I do not know whether he is a sinner, the man says. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, I now see. The chapter then closes with Jesus finding this man because he has heard how cruelly he has been treated. In a manner similar to last week's passage with the woman at the well, Jesus reveals himself to the man who he truly is. And the man who now has his sight worships him. What I want to focus on for today's sermon is not what is in today's passage, but what is noticeably absent from today's passage. What is noticeably absent in today's passage is any and all evidence of celebration. A man who was blind can now see. If that's not cause for celebration, then I don't know what is. The community has an incredible opportunity here. They have an opportunity to celebrate the fact that this man, who for the entirety of his life has been marginalized, can now participate more fully in the life of the community. They have an opportunity and they miss it. Instead of throwing the party of the century and celebrating with this man, they let their cynicism take over. Instead of celebrating the fact that this miracle did happen, they beat a dead horse and try to figure out how or why this miracle happened. Instead of praising the fact that Jesus gave this man his sight, they judge him for doing so on the Sabbath. Instead of rejoicing, that this man is no longer forced to beg for his livelihood, they toss him back and forth among one another trying to get to the bottom of what happened. Simply put, they don't really talk to the man. They talk about him. And how often is it that we often treat folks with disabilities that way? What is it then that keeps them from celebrating the miracle that has happened right there in their community. Fear. Fear has kept them from experiencing the joy that this miracle should have brought them. Fear of change. Fear of Jesus upsetting the status quo. In giving the man his sight, Jesus is upsetting the balance of things where the people at the top stay at the top and the people at the bottom stay at the bottom. Jesus is bringing to fruition what he says in, in the Gospel of Luke where the first will be last and the last will be first. Well, today's story is proof that those who are at the bottom welcome that news much more than the folks who have found themselves at the top. So what is God saying to God's church today through the wisdom of this passage? I believe that one of the many things today's passage teaches us is this. When God performs miracles among us, when folks who are hurting are healed, let's celebrate. Because when God is moving among us and the Holy Spirit is bringing change in Jesus' name, we can respond in one of at least two very different ways. Fear or curiosity. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. And hate leads to suffering. Yes, that was a Yoda reference. Please don't judge me. But there's some wisdom there. Instead of responding to miracles with fear, we can instead respond with curiosity. And curiosity leads us to very different things. Curiosity leads us to wonder. And wonder leads us to joy, and joy leads us to celebration. So today, I'm curious. What would today's passage have looked like? if the community around this man had responded with curiosity and celebration instead of with anger and fear. In fact, I'd like to give you all a little bit of homework. 
Later today, perhaps after lunch or right after it, sit down with your family or maybe call up a friend and rewrite today's passage as if the community responded with celebration, wonder, and curiosity instead of fear. What does this passage look like to you if you had uh, been the course of action? Feel free to send me your revision of today's passage, and I'll be happy to post them on Facebook to share with the wider community if you would like. Friends, I'll close with this. To state the obvious, there's a lot of fear and a lot of anxiety in our lives right now. And that's okay. That's understandable. The coronavirus outbreak has affected literally all aspects of our lives, and that means change, and change brings fear. And as we often say here at Beaumont Presbyterian Church, fear is a normal and healthy human emotion. Rather, it's what we choose to do with it that makes us who we are. In light of that truth, Today's passage compels me to ask myself the following question, and I hope that you will ask yourself the same question. In this time of disorientation, in this time of wilderness, where is God moving in my life and in the lives of others, and how can I celebrate that? In other words, friends, don't let the fear of this moment blind you to the ways that divine healing is happening all around you. So here are some examples of where I saw God's healing power at work this week. I've seen God's healing power in the ways this congregation has truly stepped up to the plate to stay connected while we are prevented from gathering physically. In some ways, I feel like we're more connected now than we've ever been in the almost two years that I've been your pastor, or at least we're doing it with the most intentionality. Calls have been made. Cards have been sent. Food has been delivered. Prayers have been made. We are investing and growing in our social media presence and reaching folks right now that we would not have reached otherwise. And we're being intentional also about reaching out to the folks in our community who don't have access to the internet or social media. As I mentioned earlier, we've started using this mobile meeting platform called Zoom, and even some of our oldest members of the congregation have stepped up to the plate and have joined us on some of these virtual meetings, these Bible studies, and other gatherings. Folks, in some ways, I have never been more proud of this congregation than I am right now, watching y'all go the extra mile to watch out for one another, to stay connected by the power of the Holy Spirit, and that gives me cause to celebrate, and it is keeping me grounded in gratitude, and I, I thank you for that. Secondly, I've seen God's healing power this week in the ministry and service of Glean, Kentucky. In case you aren't familiar with them, Glean Kentucky is a nonprofit that seeks to end food waste and hunger in our community by working with uh, retailers to put excess produce on the tables of those here in the Commonwealth who struggle with food insecurity. It was founded 10 years ago by three people, one of which is a very beloved member of our congregation, Erica Horn. On Friday, we held a small press event here at the church building to celebrate the fact that Mayor Linda Gordon has declared March 20th to be Glean Kentucky Day here in Lexington. I'm proud of Erica and the work she has done alongside many other BPC members over the years to do the gospel work of feeding people. That's cause to celebrate and give thanks to God. And finally, there's a particular time of day that I celebrate. Trisha and I have been celebrating every day at 5 p.m. Do you know what happens at 5 p.m.? What happens at 5 p.m.? Andy Bashir, our governor, goes live on Facebook at 5 p.m. Every day at 5 p.m., Trisha and I are like, shh. 
Governor Bashir's on. We have to watch this. Um, no matter whether you voted for him or for not, I, I hope that we can all be grateful for his leadership. Uh, this is not time for politics, and I, I'm grateful that he has stepped up to the plate. Governor Bashir is calm, collected, compassionate, and dare I say, pastoral. So, in fact, I've heard that other states are now a little bit jealous of Kentucky because under his leadership, we are doing so well. And I, I take comfort in that. I think that there's some healing that is taking place at 5 p.m. these days amid all of the chaos. So I am choosing to celebrate and be thankful for that. So friends, I ask you, how is God moving in your life in these hectic times, and how are you celebrating that with those you love? How is God bringing you healing? It doesn't have to be something grandiose and flashy. It can be something as simple as finding some time to Facebook, FaceTime with your grandparents or maybe reading a silly book with your children. But I'm going to ask you to celebrate, or to, excuse me, to share that celebration with us. Throughout the entirety of this coming week, I invite you to go to our Facebook page and share with us what you are celebrating this week, no matter how big, no matter how small. And when you post on our Facebook page, use the hashtag BPC Celebrates. Hashtag BPC Celebrates to let us know how God is moving in your life and so that we can celebrate that with you. So friends, let us not make the mistake of the community in today's passage from John's Gospel. Yes, times are tough. Yes, things are scary. But let us not allow fear to rob us of the joy that Jesus Christ brings us. Let us celebrate together and ask Jesus to open our eyes to what God is doing in our midst. And this is always, for the record, an important thing to do but it is especially vital when we are in the wilderness. In the name of God, the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, may all of us, God's beloved children, say, Amen. Friends, I would now invite you to rise in body or in spirit for the singing of our next hymn, number 739, Oh, for a Closer Walk with God. as we remain standing, uh, I would invite you to join us in our affirmation of faith that comes from the Reverend Sarah R. of A Sanctified Art. We believe in a wilderness God who breathed life into dust, turned seeds into flowers, and flooded the sky with stars. We believe in a wilderness God 
who went hungry in the desert, walked barefoot on the water, and taught from the mountainside. We believe in a wilderness God, whose love can be described as nothing short of wild. So with confidence and hope, we long to follow our wilderness God, who walks with people on their darkest nights, who sings hope into places of grief, isolation, and suffering, and who exists in the form of untamed joy, wildfire love, and impossible hope. Step by step, may it be so. Amen. Friends, you may be seated. Friends, let us go to God in prayer. The Lord be with you. God, our faithful shepherd, we depend on you for everything we need for daily food, for guidance and protection, for healing and injury and comfort and sorrow. You respond in abundant provision. Thank you for your tender care of us. Thank you for soothing the wounds of this life. Thank you that in the presence of enemies, especially the last enemy of death, you are with us as shepherd, host, home. Knowing your faithfulness in our lives, we bring before you the lives of others, the cares of this world, entrusting all things to your goodness and mercy. Bring healing to those who are ill in mind, body, or spirit. Bring release to those who are held captive by old hurts or new bonds that oppress and entangle. Bring freedom to those unjustly accused, relief to those burdened with debt, and comfort to all who suffer from abuse of any kind. We pray for people living precariously in the midst of war. Pro uh, protect, we pray, citizens and soldiers alike and teach us to put away our weapons and taking up instead words of peace and reconciliation. By the power at work in Christ, break down the walls of hostility we build so that we may learn to live together graciously. We remember those living in the midst of drought and famine and scarcity. We pray for rain to fall and crops to grow and for generosity to overflow from our hands and resources until all your children receive their daily bread, until all your children have clean water to drink, until all your children have adequate shelter and medical care. Compel us to be better stewards of creation so that our habitation is sustainable and responsible. Loving God, help us to see the world as you see it, to see others as you see them, and to see ourselves rightly too. Because you have come into this world for judgment, we can leave our judgment behind. Pursue us all with your goodness and faithful love until goodness and faithful love fills every heart and informs every action. We pray these things in the name of the one who came that we might see. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray, saying in whatever language is most familiar to our hearts, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we will now give of our tithes and our offerings. Obviously, we're not passing the plate this morning, but we would invite you to please mail in your cash or checks. And also, uh, Jeff is going to comment on, this, uh, on the comment section of this video feed, a link so you can go to our website and donate online. So friends, with gratitude, let us give of our tithes and our offerings.
friends, let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for these gifts, and we ask that you would bless us with the presence of your Spirit to guide us, that we may use them to celebrate what you are doing in, in this world. May all of us, God's beloved children, say, Amen. Friends, our final hymn is a familiar one, number 32, I Sing the Mighty Power of God. Friends, we are so grateful that you could join us this day, either live or by watching this video later. You are in our prayers this day, and if there is any way that we can be family to you, please reach out to us and let us know. Friends, go peaceably, looking upon the hearts of others. Live in Christ's light, even in the darkest valley. Trust that God is able to open your eyes, enabling you to walk in faith in God's name. So friends, may the love of God pursue you and the light of Christ enfold you and the Holy Spirit keep you as you dwell in the house of the Lord your whole life long. In the name of God, the creator, redeemer, and sustainer, may all of us, God's beloved children, say amen. Friends, go in peace and we hope you'll join us next week.
Wave goodbye.